Before we start the show, I just wanted to let you know that this episode is brought to you by the awesome people at MyScienceShop.com who make these amazing, awesome looking globes of worlds in our solar system. These things are so cool. I also have a Mars one over here. Check it, look how beautiful these are. True story, these were in my house for no longer than five minutes before my kids just like claimed them. They said, oh, oh, these are cool. These are going in our bedroom. Like, wait, no, I was thinking of putting it in the office. And like, nope, 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 bedroom. Okay, so I had to borrow them so I could do the ad spot, and this is probably the last of I'm gonna see them uh, outside of their bedroom. So there you go, these, these are beautiful. MyScienceShop.com, you get a discount, go to MyScienceShop.com slash Globe15, there's a link down below, that's MyScienceShop.com slash Globe15. And, and help them out, do order it, like, cause they support the show, and how awesome is that? And I mean, come on, these are gorgeous. I wish more people knew and understood and appreciated Diamond Rain. And I wish people cared more about the ice giants of the solar system. I am talking, of course, about our good friends Uranus and Neptune, the outermost planets of the solar system. And most people don't even know that they're classified as ice giants. They're not even gas giants. Of course, you already know uh, because you're a fan of science, but most people don't even know. They're just, oh, we got four rocky planets and four gas giants and that's it. No, 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 no. Uranus and Neptune are radically different than Jupiter and Saturn. Jupiter and Saturn are mostly gas, hence, hence the word gas giant. They're mostly gas, they're mostly hydrogen and helium, massive envelopes, massive atmospheres bloated out to the extreme. They're, they're just big gassy blobs. But Uranus and Neptune are not mostly hydrogen and helium, which is amazing to think about how big they are multiple times the mass of the Earth, and they did not acquire that mass through the cheap and easy way of just getting a whole bunch of hydrogen and helium. They did it the hard way. They did it with water. They did it with ammonia. They did it with methane. And these molecules are known in the astronomical community for no good reason whatsoever as ices. I mean, yes, I suppose that these elements are most common, or sorry, molecules are most commonly found in the form of ice in the galaxy, but like, come on, really? We're going to call them ices? That's pretty lame. Stop it. But I'm not in charge of jargon, so I can't do anything about it as much as it frustrates me. But since these worlds, Uranus and Neptune, are made of ices, of ammonia, water, and methane, they get to be called ice giants. And they also have a radically different formation history than the gas giants, Jupiter and Saturn. Jupiter and Saturn, they, they get a rocky core and they have a lot of gravity, there's a lot of gas around, they hoover it all down, they suck it all up and they get big and bloated. Uranus and Neptune instead trapped rocks and also ices containing rocks. And when they did form, it, it was pretty icy out there in the outskirts of the solar system. So they built themselves from ice, but then of course with the incredible heat and pressures, the ice went away. And so they're not really made of ice, even though they're called ice giants. But anyway, I wish more people appreciated them because Jupiter and Saturn get all the glory. They hog all the attention. Uranus and Neptune, our close-up images of them are 30 years old, three decades old, four decades, like these things are ancient history. And when it comes to astronomy, you look at a picture, like Google, or, or, or well, put up a picture of Uranus and Neptune, those pictures are probably older than you. And that's pretty messed up, right? We, why don't we have close-up probes? It's because Jupiter and Saturn are hogging all of the all the hardware, all the attention. You've got Galileo, Cassini, Juno, uh, the, uh, and then the Europa Clipper mission. It's like, and meanwhile, Uranus and Neptune are out there and say, hey, what about us? Are, are you gonna swing by? Like even, even Pluto got a flyby recently and not even, anyway, that's my rant. I wish more people cared about Uranus and Neptune because they are really, really cool planets and they have a lot going on under the surface. And the interiors of these worlds are super crazy. 
they have a core or it's thought like we actually don't really know what's going on in the interiors of Uranus and Neptune to, to any degree of certainty. And that's because we have no close up images. We have no data. We have no probes that we've sent in. All we have are the observations of the surface, either from the Voyager mission, Voyager 2, or from ground based observatories or the Hubble. That's it. That's all we have. And uh, we have like the motions of the moons, which can tell us, tell us a little bit about like density and mass and all that, but that's about it. We have to rely on mathematical modeling. We have to rely on our understanding of physics and science in order to get a handle on what's going on in the interiors and make our best guess. And so yes, everything that I'm about to say in this episode is based on a lot of guesses, a lot of guesswork, but scientific guesswork. It's the best we got. It's grounded in the evidence. There is some speculation here, but uh, anytime the evidence can inform the discussion, uh, it's there and it's in every discussion of Uranus and Neptune. The interiors, uh, there's a massive rocky core, a few Earth masses, masses worth of core. Then it's surrounded by a, a mantle-like thing that's really a super hot, super dense, possibly exotic quantum state of water, ammonia, and methane where nothing makes sense. And then there's the atmosphere where it just gradually thins out and out and out until you get to the cloud tops of the surface. And it's in that mantle where interesting things can really happen. And this is where we get to the idea of diamond rain. Because, and this idea was first proposed way back in 1981, before even the Voyager 2 mission to these worlds, where you know what these worlds are made of, water, ammonia, methane. And you can ask, using your knowledge of physics, what happens to these elements at the incredible temperatures, at the incredible pressures happening inside of these giant worlds? And the answer is weird stuff. In particular, methane. Methane is carbon with some hydrogen uh, groupies hanging onto it. Under the pressure, at the, at the outermost layers of the mantle, there's enough temperatures, or high enough temperatures and high enough pressures that the methane breaks apart. And so the hydrogen goes off of here, does whatever hydrogen does, and then the carbon is left. And this happens all over, so you get a whole bunch of methane get, turning into a whole bunch of carbon. And the carbon just finds each other and binds together as carbon is wont to do, and it can form some large structures. And large structures of carbon in a highly pressurized hot environment is exactly what makes diamonds. It's right there. It's the exact same physics happening under the in the in the earth in the mantle of the earth where you got a lot of carbon and a lot of squeezing going on and you make diamonds. Well, in Neptune and Uranus, you've got a lot of carbon and a lot of squeezing going on, you make diamonds. And it's possible that these diamonds can grow to be big enough that they they precipitate like rain, like a raindrop and they get heavy and they sink down through the mantle. And as they approach the core, it gets super duper duper hot. And so hot that even the diamond itself gets obliterated into its constituent carbon atoms. And then through convection, the carbon atoms circulate their way back up to the top. And then the whole cycle begins again. It's like a whole water cycle, but made of carbon and involving diamonds, which is super cool. And this is diamond rain. And we've actually performed experiments to see if this idea it could even work, and it turns out it does. Now we can't recreate all of Uranus and Neptune because they are planets literally bigger than the Earth, and so we can't exactly fit that in the laboratory, but what we can do is take giant science lasers and blast them at targets and for a very brief amount of time, replicate the kind of temperatures and pressures that you could experience inside of those planets. So if you take a material and you blast it with a laser and then you look really carefully at what happens in that split second, you might learn some interesting things. And the latest experiment didn't study methane because methane is really hard to sit still and get in front of a laser that's going to blast it apart. So the researchers looked at polystyrene, the plastic, uh, which has a lot of similar chemical properties. It's basically carbon and hydrogen. Who cares? It's all the same, right? Sorry, that is a physicist interpretation of chemistry. I apologize to any chemistry aficionados who are watching. Uh, 
But they took polystyrene, which is nice and stable, and you can pick it up and you can put it in your, in your apparatus, and you blast it with a laser, and they did, they blasted it with a laser, and they found diamond rain. They found little uh, nanoscale sized diamonds. Okay, the rain on Uranus and Neptune is probably gonna be larger than a nanoscale because the experiment, the laser, only happened for a brief fraction of a second. Uranus and Neptune have been hanging out for billions of years. They got all the time in the world to make that diamond rain, and so that's exactly what we think they do. We don't know how big the diamond rain is. We don't know how common it is. We don't know uh, if it actually even exists. But like I said, this is a guesswork. This is game of guesswork here with the outermost planets. But we're interested in the existence of diamond rain on Uranus and Neptune because this can potentially play a role in the dynamics and the physics of these worlds. They might transport heat from up to down and down to up, which will play a role in convection and in the surface features that we see on these worlds. It might play a role in the, in the generation of the magnetic fields of the planets. And it's also just super cool to think that there is precipitation of carbon in the form of diamonds, literally rain and bling here, in these outer worlds. And this is something that is unlikely to happen in Jupiter and Saturn because, again, they're mostly hydrogen and helium. Yes, they have some ammonia and methane, but maybe not enough, probably not enough to create diamond rain. And so, yeah, Jupiter has the great red spot and, and all those, and it's a giant planet, and Saturn has the rings, and everyone loves the rings. Uranus and Neptune look boring on the surface, okay? I will not, I will not lie. Very vague, bluish, greenish haze. Nothing much to look at. But you look under the surface, and they're a gem. And I just made up that joke on the spot, and I'm very proud of myself. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And go to patreon.com slash There's a link down there in the description so you can keep these episodes going. I really do appreciate it.